Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. We are going to jump right in today collecting a ball python clutch. But first, I wanted to thank Simply Safe, the sponsor of this vlog, down in here in the dungeon with Kelsey, which means that we have a ball python clutch I want to pull. And this was an exciting one that I was really waiting for. So let's see what we got. What do we have? This is a chocolate pin female bred to a banana chocolate spinner. Oh my gosh, that is going to be good. And you guys know I've been opining for a super chocolate banana, and I need to get that. So hopefully, this will be the clutch. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at that girl right there. Whoo, doggy. Ah, oh, what a clutch, too. Wow. Oh my God. We've got some opportunities with this one for sure. I think we're definitely going to hit it with this clutch right here. Again, last year, I think I had three clutches and missed on every single one of them. I was so bummed out. So we now have a couple females, this being the first that could potentially hit it. So, wow, look at that clutch of eggs, Kelsey. What a way to start the day. These are beautiful. Wow. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's incredible because she gave us five eggs last oh year. Oh my God. It's our first season, and this is... Wow. <laughs> that is awesome. That is so cool. Literally almost double the egg. And again, you know, that really gives me the option of getting that super chocolate banana pinstripe spinner, whatever the case is. Going to be absolutely incredible. Great way to start the day. I do actually want to check to see if we have any other clutches of eggs. I want to talk about some genetics with ball pythons and how that Kelsey has really had the success she's had this year with our ball python colony. We'll get into that for now. Kelsey's going to separate these eggs out a little bit, get them in the incubator box. So let's see if we have any other ball python eggs. After telling you guys about the genetics of ball pythons, I did want to show you a couple animals we're raising up for future breeders that hopefully some will be ready for next year, including this unbelievable, uber clean ball python. This is actually a black pastel pewter lesser cypress ball python. I mean, that's a lot of stuff going on. So again, it's black pastel, it's pastel, it's lesser, and it is a cypress ball python. Unbelievably clean. And we hung on to a handful of things I think are going to really up our game in the future. This girl was one of my favorite ball pythons we produced last year. This is actually a Vanilla Scream Red Stripe Yellow Belly. The Vanilla Scream is actually a pastel. It's a vanilla and it's a fire. And then of course, Red Stripe is a co-dominant mutation. And then the Yellow Belly is a co-dominant mutation. But together, hoo hoo doggy, that makes one sexy snake. And trust me, I know genetics can be a confusing, but again, it's just kind of layering of things, right? So you add a little list, you put this on top, everything kind of changes things, and then you just have to kind of find the right combinations that really make things look awesome. This happens to be a Lemon Blast NG Extreme Gene. So the Lemon Blast is a pastel and a pinstripe that make that kind of yellow, kind of reduced pattern animal. Then the NG cleans it up and even reduces it more, and then the Extreme Gene reduces it even more. So we have a few of these Coming up, I think they're absolutely incredible. And I think when I plug this into other mutations, who doggy, you get those layers going and we're gonna make some crazy animals. All right, I'm gonna confuse you guys with this one. This is actually a spinner, super stripe, red stripe. So the spinner is a pinstripe and a spider. The red stripe, of course, is a co-dominant mutation. And then the super stripe is actually an allelic thing between yellow belly and specter. So you put all those genes together and you get this absolutely stunning animal. I I cannot wait to see what this thing turns into when it gets bigger. It's going to be absolutely crazy. And again, when I start plugging this to other things, ooh, doggy. I, I just, I've always loved ball python genetics. I've always been a big part of that. A lot of people don't think that I'm still as interested in the ball python mutations as I used to be. The truth is, I still am. I love the genetics behind these guys, and this one is stunning. The one thing I can't stress enough is that just because an animal isn't a million genes doesn't mean that it's absolutely gorgeous. Sometimes really simple genetics can make some of the most gorgeous snakes. This happens to be a ghost firefly. The ghost or hypo is a recessive mutation. The firefly is just a pastel and a fire mixed together. But when you put those three genes together, they're just clean, they're bright, they're beautiful. So again, you don't need five genes to make an amazing animal. Sometimes just two genes or sometimes even one gene is enough. But I absolutely love this girl here. 
as I'm checking through eggs, I did want to talk to you guys a little bit about like the genetics behind things. Because you know, I'm always spewing stuff out and I know a lot of you guys get lost. So basically, this happens to be a pastel lesser clown ball python. But what I really want to talk about is the recessive mutation that is the clown part of that. And basically what happened was way back about 15 years ago, VPI down in Texas produced the very first clown ball python. And that kind of weird head and face pattern is what they thought looked like a clown makeup, right? And then of course they have kind of a dorsal striping too. Now again, this is a couple other mutations involved as well. And this one's gravid that I'm super excited about. But basically what happens with a recessive mutation is when you have what they call a phenotype or what basically something looks like. When you breed that to a normal, you're gonna get all normal babies that are carrying the trait, in this case for a clown ball python. When you raise those up and breed them together, on average one in four babies are gonna come out clown. Or if you breed clown to clown, two recessive mutations, you get all clowns. Does that make sense? I hope it does. I'm gonna to try to break down a few of the most simple genetics in ball python so that maybe you can follow along a little better. And by the way, that female is actually being bred to this pastel leopard clown ball python, which is two co-dominant mutations along with the recessive clown mutation. But again, you can see that dorsal striping and the interesting head pattern there. You know, as Father Days is coming up, it kind of made me reflect on what the important role of father is. And one of those roles, quite frankly, is to protect your family, right? And you guys know that I work a ton. I'm always either here, not to mention I'm always traveling all over the world trying to come across some crazy animal adventures and stuff like that. And how do I protect my family when I'm not there? And I know it might seem weird that a guy that keeps big snakes and alligators and all kinds of lizards worries about protection. But the truth is, I'm not going to lie to you, some of these home security systems kind of scare me in the sense that it just seems so complicated, right? I don't have five days to dedicate in installing something like that. The thing I like about Simply Safe is how simple it is. Again, I don't have a lot of time to install some extravagant alarm system. With these guys, literally, you can install it in minutes. And with entry alarms, breakage alarms, smoke detectors, even a camera, not to mention something I've always wanted, which is a video doorbell. It's absolutely easy and only takes minutes to do. Heck, there's even a water and freeze sensor in here. And with professional 24-hour surveillance, it really makes me rest easy with my family. They even give you a notification if you leave a door or window open. And if something were to happen, they will call the police right away. Another thing to consider with Simply Safe is the fact that it's really fair and honest pricing. For about 50 cents a day, you can have your home professionally monitored, ensuring your family is safe. And guys, literally, I'm not kidding you. I set up the entire place. I am protected with motion. I'm protected with cameras, doorbells, everything, fire, smoke, freezer. It took me like 15 minutes. I, th this is my kind of system. Please do me a favor. Show these guys some love for supporting us. You can go over to simplysafe.com slash Brian Barcheck. Get all the information on it. If you want something that's super easy, simple, and really a good price, go check those guys out. Let's go ahead and get into co-dominant mutations. This actually is a black pastel pinstripe, which is actually the black pastel is what I want to talk about. The pinstripe is the pattern, but the black pastel is the darker part of this pinstripe, and that is a co-dominant. The difference between co-dominant and recessive is the fact that the phenotype, or what it looks like, of course, is something that passed along the first generation. So when you breed a co-dominant like a black pastel, right off the bat when you breed it, half the babies on average are going to be black pastel but it kind of works a little bit like a recessive in the sense that when you breed two black pastels together, on average one in four, just like a recessive, it's going to be a super form. So kind of in simple terms without losing you guys, a codominant is almost het for super, if that makes any sense, but you just have a visual heterozygous animal. But this happens to be a black pastel pinstripe that is gravid, and she's bred to an enchi pinstripe banana. So we should be able to produce some really beautiful dark banana morphs in there that I'm absolutely excited about about. And the last genetic lesson of the day is actually something that is called allelic. Now, it's not actually co-dominant or recessive. Basically, what it is is when you have two animals and you breed them together like this pin spark, the spark is actually a component to the puma ball python. When you breed them together, you can produce something very
very different. In this case, a puma would be a yellow belly bred to a spark like this pin spark here. And this girl is actually bred to a pastel ivory, which is the super yellow belly pastel, of course. I know I'm so confusing you guys, but I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. Regardless, the yellow belly and the spark have to be present in order to produce the puma ball python. But what is different than say a double co-dominant like a bumblebee ball python or something like that is that if you take a puma, you can never reproduce the puma without having both a yellow belly and a spark on both sides of the parenting. I know that got confusing. I hope you guys understand. Let me know in the comments how I can somehow explain this a little bit better. Looks like we don't have any other ball python eggs today, but I can talk a little bit about our process of breeding them and the success we've had this year. Over the years, we've really been tweaking the way we consider how we breed our snakes and the success we've had. This year has been one of our best success rates as far as percentages with pythons for sure. And one of the things that we've really changed quite a bit is early on, we used to really do a lot of temperature cycling, sometimes even humidity cycling, and where that can be appropriate and even successful, our best success has been recently when we've changed our philosophy a little bit. Believe it or not, we hardly cycle our temperatures at all. We keep about a 92 degree hot spot during the day, and it might drop down to 90 at night, and then the ambient temperature is 83 degrees, might drop down to 81 at night. So just a couple degree drop for a few months of the year, but what we have really started to focus on is food cycles, right? And what I mean by that is that we basically just maintain the animals with say one rat a week which is enough to keep them nice and healthy but isn't necessarily putting on a lot of body weight then a couple months before we start breeding we really increase the food by two and sometimes even three times more and the thinking behind that of course is if a female is getting an abundance of food she of course is going to want to produce because her babies are going to do well because there's abundance of food for her babies if for some reason there's not a lot of food going on she may think let's not produce because I don't want my babies to hatch and then starve to death. And since we've kind of switched to this philosophy of food cycling, we're seeing a higher percentage of production from all of our boas and pythons, and we've always done it with colubrids, so that hasn't changed at all. So in a nutshell, that's basically what we think of. We do a slight temperature change for two and a half to three months, and then we do a big increase food about two months before we start breeding, continuing that heavy food feed pretty much through the breeding season until the females are off of food and become gravid. <laughs> know that I love my interactions with Elvis here and the fact that he's ready to eat is absolutely incredible of course we do the ball training as you guys know see he 100% knows it's food time with the ball I'll go ahead and hide the ball I'm gonna give him a special treat today look at that Elvis a little bit of rabbit foot <laughs> he absolutely loves that. Next up, I've been working on this with him for quite some time, and he's doing really well with it. Up here, up you go. Up you go. Don't be lazy. Come on, don't be lazy. All the way up, Elvis. All the way, come on. Keep climbing. Keep climbing, buddy. Keep climbing. There you go. There you go, bud. <laughs> Then finally, I always have to get him off my leg here. So I get him like this. Come on, Elvis, down. Down here, bud. There you go, buddy. There you go. And there it is. A little bit of training for my buddy Elvis. I absolutely love this guy so much. Again, I'll just hide the ball, hide everything else. He now knows there's no food. I can pet him like a normal monitor. He is such an incredible animal. We're gonna go ahead and feed Argus, and I'll also feed Abasuku as well. Again, we have some special treats, some rabbit parts, which I think they'll absolutely love. Uh, I tell you what, monitor lizards are absolutely insanely cool. Next up is Abasuku. Again, target training is so important to this girl, and it's really paying dividends with Argus and now it's starting to pay dividends with Abasuku as well, where they know it's food when they see the ball. When they don't see the ball, they know it's not food. So I'll go ahead and get this little treat here, this rabbit foot a treat, and see what she has to say. Here we go, girl. Here we go. Target, target. See, she immediately knows. Come on, come on. Now you go, there you go. There you go, girl. And she's gonna love this. 
She is definitely a much more dainty eater than Elvis. Like Elvis just sucks them down within a second or so. This will take her a while to get this down because she's just not a big item feeder like this. But I think it's going to be really good for her. Again, enrichment for her, right? Because she's never had a rabbit leg before. She's absolutely loving this. And a lot of variety. Again, kind of excitement and enrichment for him. This is going to work out really good. Oh, she's taking it down pretty quick. I'm actually surprised. She normally takes a lot longer. So I'll give her one more rabbit leg and then we'll move on to Artemis Prime. All right, so I really have a special treat. I'm sorry it's a little gross, but these are actually organs that'll be really good. High in iron and stuff like that for Artemis. So he's going to absolutely love it. Let's see what this crazy dude wants to do. Come on, Artemis. There he goes. He's going to eat that quick. Let's see if we can get him out here. There you go, bud. Artemis, sir. Woo! <laughs> Then last little, little big piece, we'll get him all the way back in. Come on, come on, here, here, here. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> this is crazy. Oh my God. He loves it to death, but he is definitely a bloody little mess right now. He looks like he massacred something, but uh, <laughs> that's going to wrap up the ponder feeding. I have such a good time. I mean, like, literally, I can't believe I get to do this, and uh, every single time, it's amazing. Eric, what do you got going on, man? Oh, not a whole lot. Just, we got a freezer, yeah, freezer full of mice here. Look at this. I don't know if Lori accidentally just keeps clicking the button, you know, like when the printer doesn't work. <laughs> and and you know, I know up. it's a weird problem to have, but I, I mean, literally, we have all of our freezers full of rodents, and uh, we still have some rodents in here, or we're good. You figured I'm, it all? Yeah, I'm, oh. I'm figuring it out, but don't tell Lori. I had to put some in the personal employee freezer upstairs. <laughs> She's going to be really <laughs> mad if she sees that. Right next to her ice cream cake? Right next to the ice cream cakes. Okay. Shh. All right, don't yeah. tell anyone. One, but but that is some problems that sometimes you have. Sometimes we don't have enough rodents. Sometimes we have too many rodents. Today uh, we had too many rodents. And it's that time again. Let's go ahead and open up the reptarium. These guys were here on a tour. You have a good time. Very Yay. good. You ready? Awesome. All right. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Let's do this. All right. Go. <laughs> All right, just hanging out at the Reptarium. Look who showed up. My boys that, uh, <laughs> that helped me the build this place. I know, we, we allowed them back. They actually haven't been here since we were like halfway done with the place. So yeah. uh, what do you guys think? I mean, it's done now. What do you think? It's it's changed so much that it's, it's awesome to it's see crazy to how back. many people are in here, all the different animals. It's, it's awesome. It's, it's incredible. A good time. It's so amazing. So it's so great to have my friends back that again aided in building this place out and letting them see this for the first time. So uh, we're having a great night tonight. Having an absolutely amazing night here. I tell you what, I think I'm going to go ahead and just shut the vlog down. Just enjoy this night. Wish you guys an amazing day. Tell you how much I love you because I really do. Do me a couple favors. Be kind to someone. If you want, you can smash that like button and hit that notification bell. All that good stuff. I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.